Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out a couple new frames from iFlight RC, uh, the HL5 and the HL7. I've got all the parts out here for the HL5, and I'm going to show you what the uh, carbon looks like and everything, what you get in the box. Uh, the HL7, I believe, is pretty much the same frame, same body, just the obviously 7-inch arms instead of 5-inch arms. And I believe the thickness is different on the HL7, the 4mm thickness of the arms on the HL5. And then on the 7 inch version, the arms are a little bit thicker at uh, 5 millimeters instead of 4. So we're going we're gonna to build this frame out and then build out the 7 inch frame and we'll do a little comparison between the two. But first, just going to go over all of the parts. Essentially, the parts are going to be the same for, for both kits. Um, obviously, the difference between the HL7 will have the, the bigger arms. And here's what the arms for the 5 inch look like. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit shorter. Four millimeters thick. The carbon's very nice and clean and chamfered, just like all other iFlight RC frames. Uh, the quality of the cuts and everything is pretty good. Uh, the design is kind of interesting here on the end of the arm. You got uh, you know, the edge of the holes of the, the motor screw is pretty much right at the edge here. There is a, a TPU part that will act as a motor guard or motor um, bumper. That's just a little, little hook there at the end. So I'm going to be using this on this build to give it a little bit extra protection on any type of a crash on the end. It'll protect your motor. I'm not a big fan of this hole here. I'm not sure. Yeah, I obviously, I think they're going for weight savings here because they want to spread out the arm a little bit. But yeah, that's um, kind of interesting that they're going for that kind of design. And obviously, all four arms are going to be uh, the same design. And you get these two plates here. One's a bottom plate and one's a top plate. And uh, I believe that there, these arms are going to be sandwiched on the, between the bottom plate and then these little retaining plates here, like so. And then there's this extra piece right here that I'm not exactly sure is for. Um, by the way, these two plates here, the two main uh, top and bottom plates are two millimeters thick. You get these two uh, carbon side plates here see that this is for the camera mounting and also gives a little bit of a cage for protecting the camera and these are three millimeters thick so of course you do get a bag of uh, screws and nuts and bolts and standoffs of course to put together uh, they do provide these foam feet because it is a top mounted battery so this is going to go under the arms I'm not sure if I'll be using these or not you get a uh, little foam pad for the battery area and it looks like everything is already cut out Get another TPU part here. This goes on the back. Um, get a little, uh, I guess, little covers here for or for the little forever tubes for the antennas. And looks like they have a, a special hook back here if you're going to be using a sort of long range antenna like the Immortal T antenna, um, any kind of like long range, uh, like 900 milli milli megahertz antenna. That's what this is for. This will go in the back uh, between the two standoffs, and then you have a little angled area for your SMA connector for the VTX. And they're including three battery straps with the new metal buckle. Pretty nice. And here's an explosion diagram of what the drone should look like fully assembled. You can see the bottom plate screws going through here. You have some uh, nuts there, standoffs. So just going to follow these directions. All the screw lengths are labeled. So it should be pretty easy to uh, put this together. So I'm going to go put this one together as well as the 7 inch version and then we'll take a look at both of them. Okay, so I got both of the frames assembled and it did seem uh, kind of complicated at first but actually it wasn't too bad at all. And as I suspected, uh, the difference between the 7 inch version here in the back and the 5 inch version, the only, only difference is the arms. The body and everything here is the same. Of course, uh, because they're using uh, four millimeter arms, uh, thickness arms here for the five inch, the uh, screws are a little bit longer there, you can see. Uh, they go a little bit one millimeter longer, but on the uh, seven inch, you can see that they're flush with the press fit nuts because you've got the five millimeter arms here. But otherwise, uh, other than the arms being different, the bodies are the same. Now they are marketing the five inch here as a freestyle frame, uh, whereas they're marketing the seven inch here as a long range flyer and I think that's what this extra piece is for. They include this little piece for both and I I believe this actually goes right here because you can see that it covers both the 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 stacks and then this would then 
uh, stick out underneath like that. And I think that's for the GPS. If you have some sort of a GPS, you could screw that onto here and have that out of the way of the props uh, for the long range stuff. So I'll probably save this for later, um, add this on if you want to put your GPS on that. So that's what that's for. Now putting the frame together was actually not too bad. I would recommend obviously starting with the bottom plate. Uh, you want to put your arms on. There's going to be four screws for each arm. Two of these screws are going to go into the 20 millimeter standoffs and the other two are going to go into these uh, press fit nuts here and that, that's going to hold those four screws hold on each arm so basically those four screws the two standoffs the press fit nuts and then this retaining plate that's going to go that basically sandwiches uh, the the arms and to the bottom plate so you have your bottom plate your arms and this little sandwich plate here and that whole thing holds everything together along with the standoffs both in the front and in the back, and I kind of was kind of wondering why they did this. I mean, it might have been simpler to just make one long arm here, one piece arm, and you know, get rid of this uh, little space here, and just use instead of using four standoffs in the back here, you can use two standoffs here and two standoffs in the front, so you would have less hardware, so you can make the frame a little bit lighter. Um, but going this way with uh, basically four standoffs in the front and back here, and you have nice big area in the middle for your electronics. Uh, you know, it's fairly stiff. You can't really, it's really rigid. Now, if, obviously it's rigid because you have uh, both the top plate and bottom plate acting as supports for these standoffs. But if you don't have the top plate on here, the, obviously the two millimeter bottom plate will, will bend. So uh, we'll have to see how well this does in a crash because um, obviously with all these standoffs here and screws, it's gonna hold everything together nice and tight. But uh, yeah, it's only two millimeters for the bottom plate. I think two millimeters is probably okay for the top plate. The bottom plate, maybe three millimeters would have been nicer, but of course that adds more weight. And it's a pretty big bottom plate, but it does feel pretty rigid overall. So we'll have to see how that uh, performs over time. Now, once you assemble the arms uh, to the bottom plate, the next step you want to do is set up this cage in the front. And basically you want to you screw these three standoffs in right here and then the side plate will notch into the bottom plate here and then you're gonna or then at that point screw in the other side and then notch it into the other side here so then you're gonna have the bottom plate the arms and then the cage and then you can go ahead and then uh, put the top plate on it's gonna slide in and it's gonna notch into here and then you're gonna screw down with the eight screws on top and then this piece back here is for your uh, VTX SMA adapter, so you're gonna have an antenna poking out this way at an angle, and then this little piece here is for your long range stuff. If you have like an Immortal T antenna, some sort of 900 megahertz antenna, uh, Crossfire or uh, the FreeSky Free R9 system, so that's what that's for. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Okay, let's get a few measurements here uh, for motor to motor. So the motor to motor on the five inch is coming in at about uh, 225 millimeters. The side to side is about 180 millimeters, and the front to back is about 138 millimeters. So it's uh, wider than it is front to back, so it's an H style frame. Okay, so now measuring the 7 inch frame, the motor to motor is coming in at 297 millimeters. The side to side is coming in at about 233, 34 millimeters. And the front to back distance is about 182 millimeters. Okay, so the bare weight of the frame of the 5 inch version comes in at about 129.4 grams. So kind of on the heavy side, but it is a freestyle frame, top mounted battery, and of course you're going to have a GoPro up here. So you're going to probably want to go with some pretty big beefy motors like a 2207 or 2306. Now the 7 inch version, we're coming in at about, 100 and, about 160 grams. So not too bad for a seven inch obviously it's gonna be for long range so you you kind of want to keep things light but you know with these both of these frames here you got a pretty wide area for your battery and i know people are going to ask me how how wide this is and that's about 135 millimeters of battery uh space front to back obviously if you're with your gopro here at an angle you guys going to probably cut that off a little bit but should be able to get a pretty long 
pretty big battery in it. I would say, uh, I think if you're going to go with 7 inch for long range, uh, depending on what kind of a setup you're going to be you're having, you could easily put a, a 4S, 5S, 2200, you know, 2600 milliamp hour battery, something really big, and get a really long flight time. Um, don't have an, any idea what kind of a setup I'm going to put on this. I'm probably going to go with some 2207, like low KV, like 1600 KV motors. You can maybe do like a 4S setup, something like that. We'll just see. Kind of, kind of doing some research on this, but if you guys have any suggestions on a setup for the 7 inch for long range uh, FPV, yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. And then uh, for the 5 inch, I'm probably going to go with some 2306 motors. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I have, some, I think I have some uh, hobby motors coming in. But if you guys have any suggestions on on a setup for this, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so that's going to do it for this review of the HL5 and HL7. I'll probably be building the HL5 uh, before the HL7 because I still don't have props and motors and stuff for the 7-inch, but I can probably build the 5-inch pretty soon. Uh, try and keep it as light as possible. I'm probably going to use the HGLRC uh, all-in-one uh, flight controller video transmitter board like I used in the Chameleon build, uh, or the Chameleon clone build. So. So this is probably a pretty similar freestyle build with the, uh, you know, obviously the GoPro in the front and everything like that. Let's see how that turns out. But if you have any suggestions, do let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.